Jace2Cent here coming at you with one of those tutorial videos that I used to do a lot of and I haven't done in like, <laughs> well, way, way longer than I'd like to admit. But that's okay because we're here today and we are going to do a video today about how to refresh a beat up, scratched up radiator and make it go from fab to flab. Wait, that's, that's not right. Damn it. If you thought Skunk Works was cool, then head on over to mod.coolermaster.com and watch the biggest names in case modding compete for over $20,000 in cash and prizes. So if you've ever taken a radiator out of one case and installed it into another, you've probably noticed right away that it starts to look pretty bad pretty quickly. You get lots of dirt that gets stuck in the fins, you get some scratches that appear on the screw holes, and it just becomes very unsightly. And maybe you've even been tempted to toss it out, but you don't want to do that. Today we're going to go ahead and refresh this bad boy. Of course, to get the job done right, you're going to need a few items. First, you're going to need some cardboard, some 400 grit sandpaper, canned air, a can of paint, maybe another can of paint, a utility knife, a sandwich, and of course the radiator. Start off by taking your canned air and cleaning off as much of the dust from the fins as you possibly can. Now don't worry, some of the dust is going to get stuck to the fins and will not come off. You might have to resort to running your radiator underneath some water, but if you do that, you want to make sure it's completely dry before moving on to any of the painting steps. Now the paint I'm using for this is the Rust-Oleum Universal Satin, which is a paint and primer in one. Uh, you would think it's a good thing because it'll stick to anything, but really I'm just too cheap to buy separate primers. So I thought, eh, works for me. Now that your radiator's all nice and clean, go ahead and move out to a well-ventilated area because this, after all, is not a, a huffing tutorial. This is a how to paint your radiator tutorial in case you got a little bit confused. Now go ahead and take your 400 grit sandpaper and, and, and by the way, never mind the hieroglyphics on the ground. That's secret, super secret project. Can't, can't tell you about it or I'd have to kill you. So don't even ask. You've been warned. Now go ahead and take your sandpaper here and you're going to make some, some smooth back and forth motions, back and forth, back and forth, you know, just like you were rubbing a wax on your car and you're going to want to pay special attention to the area where the paint or the powder coating in this case is starting to chip off and you're going to want to make that as smooth as possible but the idea here is that you're roughing up the texture of the surface and you're getting off any sort of dirt or grime that may have been stuck to it and so you can give the paint and primer something to adhere to because if you don't then of course you're not gonna get anything to stick and then this will turn into how to make your radiator look like crap tutorial and, that, and that's not what we're doing here not today anyway that's next week. Now sanding on your radiator is going to make a lot of lovely dust, but unfortunately that doesn't work very well for painting. So you're going to want to take a wet paper towel or washcloth and, and you're going to want to rinse away as much of that dust as possible. Use your canned air, use a wet rag, ignore the devil dog back there. He's a ferocious, vicious creature who will bite your gonads off if you even try to break into the house. So I, I don't suggest it. He's very, he's very fearsome. Now that the radiator's been completely prepped and ready to go, go ahead and prep your paint can by shaking it up real good and never mind why it seems to be such a natural motion. I, I don't even, you don't even stop. You're stupid. Stop. You don't know me. But this is a brand new can of spray paint. You don't want to spray directly onto the radiator right away. You want to do some test sprays. You want to see if it's going to shoot out nice and even or if it's going to spray or if it's going to be... This tutorial is starting to sound like a terrible idea now that I think about this, but eh, we're committed now. So you want to make sure it's spraying nice and even. Uh, you don't want that globs of paint being thrown onto the fins. So once it's spraying nice and even, you just want to do some nice even coats back and forth, maybe 12 inches away from the radiator fins. So we're just going to do a light coat on here to make it nice and smooth. That's that's it. That's it. No more than that. If you do more than that, you've you've done you've done too much, and you went ahead and you didn't watch and you didn't pay attention. And now you've you've ruined it. You've ruined it. Now, if you're repainting your radiator all black, then you can pretty much just go ahead and skip these next couple of steps. But if you want to change the outside color of your radiator to something cool like white or yellow or plaid, then what you're going to want to go ahead and do here is cover up the radiator fins so you don't get overspray on them. Now, there's two methods that I use here to do this. The first thing you're watching me do here is take some cardboard. Remember, we mentioned the cardboard. And we're gonna cut out a template so that we can slide the cardboard in underneath the fan uh, screw down points so that we can protect the fins. Now, normally you could just tape this off, which is the other method which I'm showing here. 
but the cardboard actually provides some protection for the fins, whereas the, the tape doesn't. So if you bang it or something gets hit against it, you're not gonna be able to keep from smashing the fins. The cardboard method that you can. But the bottom line here is you wanna protect the fins from getting overspray and damage, and you want it to be as snug up against the sheathing or the shielding of the radiator as you can so that you don't get overspray down inside. Now the last thing you wanna do to prepare your radiator for painting and, and the pending awesomeness that is gonna come of it is to prepare your fitting ports so that you don't get paint down in them. Paint inside your radiator is a bad thing. So go ahead and take a piece of paper towel or something non-fibrous. It's not gonna make a ton of fibers, like toilet paper would be bad. Uh, go ahead and roll it up like some sort of a nerdy, you know, but that, that's big enough so that you can fit it down inside the tube and the fitting port there and have it be snug so that paint's not gonna get in there. If you happen to have any sort of fittings that you don't care if they get painted or any sort of plugs, then it is just G-quarter threaded and you could just thread in anything you wanted to protect the holes as well. So use whatever's best for you. So last but not least, before we get to the fun part of spray painting stuff, make sure you take a screw or something that matches your radiator threading and screw it in so you have something to hang it by. So now comes the part you've all been waiting for, the end of the video. Oh, no wait, uh, we're, we're not quite there yet. Almost there, sorry to disappoint, so anyway. Now's the part where we get to spray paint the radiator. So you wanna suspend the radiator, you don't wanna handle it, you don't wanna touch it, anything you do at this point, handling it would be terrible. And you're gonna wanna make nice, even spray motions on it. But first thing you're gonna wanna do is actually do a test spray to see which way the wind is blowing so you can stand upwind of the wind. You don't want the spray paint coming back into your face. Trust me, that's a terrible thing. So anyway, now that you know which way the air is actually blowing, go ahead and just start doing even coats and do multiple coats if necessary. The worst thing you could do at this point is put on too much paint and have it start running. Because then you have to run and try and catch it and nerds are typically out of shape and the last thing you want to do is have to run. Now that you've given ample time for your paint to dry according to the paint specifications found on your can, you're going to want to go ahead and start peeling up the tape slowly and just take your time. You don't want to scratch the thing, but you want to make sure you give plenty of time for it to dry. I know you're going to be really eager to see how the thing is going to look, but the worst thing you can do is start messing around with it before the paint is fully cured, which at many times could take more than a day or 24 to 48 hours. You're going to want to go ahead and just give it plenty of time to sit out in the sun or just completely bake and dry. So if you follow these instructions very carefully, because I know they were extremely complicated and you could have never done this without my video, uh, slash sarcasm, then you would have a radiator now that looks very, very happy and proud versus the sad and pitiful radiator it was when you started. So anyway, there you go, guys. That is how you take a radiator that has been a little bit loved and is a bit tired and make it look like new. Well, there you go. As you can see, it's pretty damn simple to paint and refresh your radiator. I've had a bunch of dents and things in there. There's not a whole lot you could have done about that. But if it's just minor scratches, especially around the screw area or dirty fins, you can certainly make it look really, really good. Very minimal effort and only a couple of bucks. I'm not gonna lie, I almost threw this radiator out. But this extreme radiator here from Swift Tech is a very good radiator and I didn't want to lose it. So I figured this would be a perfect opportunity to kind of give you guys a little lesson here on how to do something easy, simple, cheap, and effective. Hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. It's a little bit of a how-to from Jay, which we haven't done in quite a while. So if you liked it, you know what to do. Hit the thumbs up button. If you hated it and you thought white radiators are stupid, I think you're stupid. But feel free to hit the dislike button. That's why that one's there as well. Feel free to comment, head on over to the forums, social media, and all that fun stuff. And as always, guys, above all, thanks for watching. I think, I think it looks pretty damn good. Now what the heck am I gonna put it in? Hey, what's up YouTube, Jay's Two Cents here, and I think new buyers who are looking at building their first computer, or even building another computer, but haven't done so in a while, are getting really caught up and confused on how to choose the right motherboard. And I don't blame you guys, there's a lot of crap on motherboards.